ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Gray, and I'm taking Tom Corrington's place today on Grassroots. And this is a show where we talk about the things that affect you and your life and and how how you go about your day-to-day -day business and one of those things that affect us is the people that we elect to represent us for government and today we have our state representative Judd Matheny here and uh, Judd thanks for being with us you come from time to time and fill us in on you know, what's going on at the state level well, I'm glad to be here first off let me uh, <coughs> say to Tom Corrington, I'm sorry you're not with us today. I know he's been ill and we wish you a speedy recovery, Tom. That's, and, uh, he's, that's correct. He's, Tom's always been a, a great friend and a good host and he's always uh, find some good points to pull out of me, so I appreciate yeah, him. Yeah, well I'll see if I can drag a couple of things out today. I'm, I'm ready. But you know, we uh, we were a little late in, in this report after we finished the session, but uh, we want to talk about a few things oh, that are affecting all of us. One is health care. Yep. One is uh, uh, schooling. E education, ed education is a very big and, thing. And states' rights, yeah. And when uh, Tom and I, we did a show not too long after session, and we went over the Medicaid issues, the Medicaid expansion in Tennessee. Um, quite a bit, and, and uh, just to recap that very briefly, uh, many of the things we're going to talk about today are going to center around states' rights, John. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge resurgence on, in many states, and definitely in Tennessee, on recapturing a lot of the rights that we've lost to the federal government right. over the years, the control. And basically, if it's not expressly written in the Constitution of the United States of America, that power is reserved for the states. Uh, Health care is one of those, and, and this past year we rejected the expansion of Obamacare in Tennessee. It's not that we don't want the money, and it's not that we don't want to help Tennesseans, but we want to spend the money the way we choose to spend it in Tennessee, not by a federal formulary. So we rejected it in Tennessee. We'll try again next year to get the money in a block grant from the federal government right. where we can take care of as many folks as we can. And when we come back from the break, we'll talk about uh, education, some other states' rights issues, and of course terrorism in Tennessee, which is on everybody's mind now. Well, I guess we probably have the biggest federal government right now we've had ever in this country, and uh, I, I agree with you on the fact that we in the states need to uh, take control of our own business and our own lives. Yes, sir. And after this quick commercial break, we'll be back and discuss that more. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. Let the smokehouse be your mountain getaway destination in beautiful Monteagle, Tennessee. Enjoy our cabins, restaurant, and old general store. Shop the smokehouse.com featuring homemade barbecue sauces, jellies, and many other fine Tennessee products. Our live Music on the Mountain series features some of the best local and Nashville talent every Friday and Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. No cover, kids welcome. All right, Judd Matheny's with us again today, and what we're going to talk about now, the first subject we're going to broach, because we're going back to school right now. Kids are going back into school, and uh, I was at the high school, and one of the people from the state was there explaining some of the things that are going on in, in teaching now, and how they've changed this and done a few things, and how they're going about it. So give us a little rundown on education and how the good education of our young people in this state is going to be accomplished. Yes, it will be accomplished and that is a priority. Now there are, there are a lot of things going on in education, a lot of, uh, and we won't get into the peripheral issues um, that have to do with a lot of the individual teacher relationships with the systems and things of that nature. We're trying to get the review and the evaluation process streamlined where it's not as onerous on the teachers any longer and I think we're slowly headed in that direction. But what I mainly want to talk about is Common Core education which was uh, basically a federal curriculum that was coming out nationwide or a federal set of standards that were coming out statewide that the curriculum would be built around to meet 
And the state of Tennessee, much like the uh, Medicaid expansion, much, lo much like other states' rights issues we'll talk about throughout this show, the state of Tennessee was not willing to get into bed once again with the federal government in any way, shape, or form on the education of our children. Because we know, just like uh, the federal government has done with health care and transportation and many other things, that if we allow that door to open 20 years from now, they're going to own it. And right. all the purse strings will be attached to the federal government. Our teachers will become quasi-federal employees, and we'll have even more loss of local control. So uh, back in uh, myself and five others back in uh, 2013 staged a coup on the House floor and stopped Common Core from progressing any further in Tennessee. And uh, we were actually the first state to stop it midstream in the legislature. And uh, it caused a lot of uh, angst amongst the uh, establishment Republicans, uh, Jeb Bush and Bill Haslam and, and whatnot, but we and Lamar Alexander. But we held our guns and finally brought the governor to the negotiating table last year. Uh, Speaker of the House put me on the education symposium last September that the governor put together. And out of 50 people there, I was the only one that made the recommendation that uh, we needed a set of standards and uh, assessments that were promulgated by Tennesseans, professional educators and Tennesseans, ratified by parents and then, and then um, uh, actually administered by Tennesseans. And I was the only one that made that comment. It was poo-pooed at the meeting by the governor. <laughs> but lo and behold, the governor came out a month later and said that's exactly what we needed and today that's what we have. A good friend of mine named Billy Spivey introduced a bill that totally repealed Common Core last year. It will phase it out and put in place a new Tennessee evaluation system and Tennessee assessment system. And it will be spearheaded by a group called a, it'll be a, uh, uh, a recommendation committee, mm -hmm. education recommendation, curriculum recommendation committee that will, will head this process up. And I'm proud to say that uh, I nominated uh, Shannon Duncan from here in, in Tullahoma to be on that committee. She's a, a wonderful teacher, has some administrative experience and has an eye towards a conservative um, education system that will benefit all of Tennesseans. And uh, I think she knows what parents want, she knows what the education system needs, and she knows what our kids need. And she's beginning work uh, almost as we speak on this show with that committee statewide. Oh, that's um, wonderful. She's a very, very bright young lady. She is. And uh, her family and her, her, mo her mother-in-law is taught for years in the school system great and they're experience very, there very and, bright people and uh, we can we can rest comfortably that we're going to be well represented there both in our conservative values and in the need to have a competitive education in the future so we're, we're uh, we've we've taken what could have been a uh, hemorrhage of our educational powers to the federal government we've recaptured those and uh, they're even close to home now with Shannon being in bo on board so we're proud of what we've done with the federal uh, with curtailing the federal government's involvement in our everyday life there and we're going to continue to push back. We've got a, uh, I've, I've uh, made a, a little organization called Tennessee First America Always, John, and that, that uh, group now consists of about 35 legislators in the Tennessee General Assembly and we're committed to exercising our state's rights and recapturing many of the rights that have been lost through uh, liberal court opinions and through basically the uh, state leaders laying down and allowing the federal government to take over many of our operations. Well, it, you know, uh, originally it was written the United States are. Yes. And it's turned into the United States is. Yes. And, there's, and, there's, and we need to get it back to the United States are. Nothing wrong with having 50 different ways of doing something and um, the best one being emulated um, by other states and, and states being used as laboratories to come up with good ideas. The federal government wants one size to fit all and that's just not going to work. Um, basically our organization believes that the individual citizen, the individual local government has power and authority and responsibility and they have the ability to take care of themselves and we will ask higher governments for help when we need it. The federal government unfortunately now they believe that we're incapable of responsible decision making that we're incapable of taking care of ourselves as individuals and that we need government we must have government in order to be safe every day in order to be prosperous and it's a, they're very antithetical opinions and uh, I think the federal government squarely on the losing side with that they definitely are in Tennessee so we're going to continue to push back as a, a states rights group uh, another place you're seeing us push back hard is the attack on our heritage um, you know this whole business about removing the confederate flag from monuments and removing monuments and changing the names of our history you can't do that you, you cannot erase your past and ever have a future 
um, that is going to be that is not going to repeat those mistakes of the past. Um, our heritage is our heritage, and our history is our history. In Tennessee, we've passed a law that uh, forbids local governments from removing any state monuments or state uh, parks, etc., uh, without the approval of the Tennessee General Assembly. Right. And um, so we, we're a little bit ahead of the curve there. In order to remove the bust of Nathan Bedford Forest and uh, close Nathan Bedford Forest State Park and do some of these other things, it's going to have to go through the Tennessee General Assembly eventually. And um, so, and uh, I pledge to the viewers here that I will never vote to uh, remove our history and our heritage of this country. Um, whether you're proud of it or you're not, it is part of our history and our heritage and something that must be taught, something that must be remembered, and something that must be learned from. And once again, this, this, this national political correctness we're in, we're going to try to remain reasonable and calm throughout it all and uh, not allow it to take us down. Well, the, the federal government is, is, was put in place to protect us. They need to get about doing that. Yes, sir. They need, to, they need to look at our borders. They need to, uh, to make sure that people who are in service to protect us are properly armed. They need to make sure that our soldiers that are on standing on the wall in foreign lands are properly cared for and let us worry about our health care and our education right here where we live and get about protecting us because that's what they were put in place to well, do. And, and let's, let's talk about terrorism a minute. Um, folks that have followed me politically know that for six years I've led the fight in the Tennessee General Assembly against terrorism. Um, especially against Islamic extremism, and uh, we have the most. We passed at first the most stringent laws in the state of Tennessee of any state in the union six years ago to deal with attacks. Called uh, basically, we adopted the federal law that that allowed our local prosecutors to go after anybody that was providing material support to a known terrorist entity, and the U.S. Department of State lists those known terrorist entities, and. Um, we also pass laws that uh, allow victims of terrorism to be able to go back and, and go after those entities that, that help support terrorism and seize their assets. We've uh, reduced the number of foreign teachers that can come and teach at any one time in any one uh, institution. Uh, at in, that we've capped those percentage points. We passed a law that only Tennessee laws can be heard in Tennessee courts. Uh, no influences from any foreign governments. Almost every one of the laws that I've just mentioned, it's only a fraction of the ones we've passed, have been emulated in many other states. Right. Um, some of them in as many as 20 or 30 states. What we have set ourselves up for is we are, we are more than prepared to react to a terrorist attack. We can, we can go after the bad guys and we can prosecute them hard and hit them hard, but our governor has not taken the tools that Janet Napolitano, then the Secretary of of Homeland Security told the states to pass in 2011, which Senator Ketcher and I passed, which is empower your local law enforcement with enforcing these laws. We did that, but the governor has ignored allowing our local law enforcement to be able to properly enforce these. He has not uh, uh, helped us in teaching our local law enforcement how to do forensic uh, investigations on terrorism money, accounting uh, investigations, etc. Make no mistake, folks, there are hundreds of millions of dollars worth of terrorist money laundering going on right now in Tennessee. Um, there's some specific examples going on in West Tennessee. Just three years ago there was one in Mount Juliet, Tennessee that was part of a three hundred million dollar Hezbollah ring. Tennessee has allowed these entities to park here and raise money to finance these organizations. Plus our mosques have radicalized individuals. Now on two occasions, one in Nashville Mosque radicalized Carlos Bledsoe who killed a recruiter in Little Rock, Arkansas in 2009 and then just recently the tragedy in Chattanooga where an individual was radicalized at a mosque in uh, Franklin, Tennessee in Cool Springs then committed his terrorist attack in Hamilton County. Political Magazine just named Tennessee as the hotbed for jihad in the United States. We are the seed state for it. We have had the governor. We have had a governor that has been uh, asleep at the wheel on the problem. The General Assembly has not been, and uh, we hope the governor will wake up. He is not seeming to, but we're going to keep pushing. And uh, if you've read any of my editorials, they're online now. Enough is enough, part one, and enough is enough, part two. Uh, they'll detail it in, in pretty well. All right. Well, what we're going to do right now, folks, is take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more conversation with our state representative, Judd Matheny. It's time for every family and business in Tullahoma to go green 
and recycle. Tell them Public Works makes it simple and easy to recycle. Just place your recyclable materials, paper, plastic, aluminum, and cardboard beside your garbage container on the same day your garbage is picked up. Your recycled materials don't have to be in a fancy container. Recycling is not only the right thing to do, it makes sense. Recycling pays. Paying to bury our garbage costs each of us. Please do your part. Let's go green, Tullahoma, and recycle. You made the time and the sacrifice to broaden their horizons, to see their smiles, but mostly to make lifelong memories. We think it's time to do it again, just the two of you. Don't let illness or injury slow you down. The rehab team at Life Care Center of Tullahoma is ready to help you live well. I'm meteorologist Leland Statham from the News Channel 5 Weather Center. Look to Jim Fuller and crew for local news night here on Channel 6. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back, and today we're visiting with our state representative, Judd Matheny. And Judd, the next thing I sort of want to get into is health care, because that's a big issue, and I've you know, I've turned 66 years old and trying to figure out how to how to cope with all of that. And uh, Obamacare is what 8,000, 60,000 pages or something like that. And yeah. who in the world can figure that out? Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing in the state of Tennessee to make it? easier and better for people to understand where they can find their health care and and get good health care well what we're tr what we're trying to do is keep from getting involved in the morass which is known as medicaid expansion and to be able to roll out a program that tennessee has control over from day one that if it ever gets out of control we're going to be able to sever it without the liability that we saw in the past and the, the point i'm making i've been in office long enough now that i i was here I was in office when the first 10 care debacle happened a decade ago. And I watched our transportation funds be raided, and I watched every reserve fund in the state be raided. Literally about $2 billion of money between 2003 and 2008 that should have gone to highways, highway, not just maintenance repair, but new construction. It really, 10 care took us from, a, from one of the most progressive um, highway construction states to a maintenance only state. It broke our highway trust fund because we had no way to extract ourselves from the hemorrhaging cost of TenCare with the deal that was uh, brokered at that time with, with the U.S. government. So we wanted to make sure any deal that's brokered this time has a clear severability from it, that if federal government does not do what they said they would do, provide the, f the amount of funding they said they would provide, that we can extract ourselves from it without legal court proceedings, because it is the, it is the lawsuits in court that tied us up for so long, held held our hands and kept us from being able to cut our budgets where we needed to in order to save other aspects of state government. So we want a deal, it's not that we want less money, we want more control of the money. And we want to be able to set up the programs that Tennessee can afford. And, and there are plenty of resources within Tennessee through the existing hospitals and uh, doctor communities to be able to use that money to ensure almost all of the people that are in that segment of, of uninsured Tennesseans depending on what number you look at, between 175 and 250,000. That would be the first option, to get that money in a federal block grant and spend it the way Tennesseans want to spend it. That probably won't happen or it won't happen just like I said. So the next option is going to be for us to piecemeal the problem. And a good friend of mine, Representative Dennis Powers from East Tennessee, has an excellent plan that takes some of the uh, hospital assessment money that hospitals assess themselves every year in order to draw down additional federal money to pay for uncompensated care for this population and allows us to take about 80,000 people immediately off those uninsured rolls and put them on the insured rolls as long as they're working at least 26 hours a week. And it gives them a voucher to be able to pay for their health care. So we may end up having, and there's several other programs that are out there that can be funded with existing resources that may take care of 12,000 here, they may take, they may help businesses that employ part-time people take care of another 40,000 here and we can get, get to where we need to be without breaking the bank. We know for sure that if we get in, into the bed with the federal government for another major financial initiative that in the future there's going to be a devaluation of federal currency or there's going to be a, a drop in federal money that comes to Tennessee and we're going to feel, all of our other programs are going to feel um, the crunch from it. K 
case in point of why I know this money is going to be cut, if you go to the websites of our nine U.S. congressmen, seven of them state on the front page of their website that their initiative, their goal is to cut federal spending. Tennessee is the third most dependent state on federal money right now in the United States. It only takes a common sense calculation to figure out that if our federal delegation wants to cut federal spending and we're the third most reliant state on federal money that is only prudent for the state to come up with a course for spending money that is responsible that is in concert with our federal government. That if they want to cut the money we prepare for those cuts. That doesn't mean and that means we uh, put a contingency in place and uh, I've got a piece of legislation that does that. It's called the Federal Accountability Act. That, that requires, and this would happen too with TenCare, it requires every department within state government to identify a year in advance which programs they would cut provided there is a cut in federal funding. So instead of us waking up one morning and learning that there will be six or eight or ten percent less federal money coming in the future, we already have the plan to cut those programs if that federal money is cut. And everybody that's receiving those money always knows a year in advance that their potential programs are on the chopping block. So it identifies the sacred political cows before the money is actually cut. And uh, it, it, it does several things, John. This bill wakes everybody up to the fact that Tennessee is so dependent on federal money. 41% roughly of our budget is pure federal money. Another 19% of our money is quarantined to draw down additional federal mm -hmm. money for other programs. That leaves us very, very little discretionary money to be able to spend as state legislators and on state programs that we want to spend. So we've got to get away from that 60% and tick back to that 50 plus percent of the money is state, totally state controlled money. And that's what that, that's what that bill would do. Another thing, and I'm going to segue a little bit from health care. Well, let, me, let me ask one yeah. quick question. <clears throat> this is a layman's question. You have a big business, like a big hospital, that has uh, 300 employees. Their health insurance, because of the amount of people they have involved, is less expensive than me with 10 employees going out to cover my 10 employees. Yep. Is, is there, has there ever been a, a thing put, tried to be put together to have a co-op? of yes. small businesses where small businesses can gather together and between all of them have 2,000 employees in this co-op. Would something like that work? Absolutely would and that was one of the plans that I talked about that would work for a lot of the businesses that hire especially part-time employees. Most of the people we're talking about have less than 40 hours a week work for whatever reason. Um, a whole host of reasons. So th this would allow many of your smaller companies to be able to pull together and have have the numbers and the volume and to get the price down to where they can right. afford to give offer that Which to is their what, people. What state employees do, it's what teachers do, it's what large corporations do. Right. Okay. Is they share the cost out. Absolutely. Okay. And that that I just think that might be a little piece that can be. That slid is a, in it there. absolutely a piece, and and we keep chipping away at it. We'll bring that two hundred fifty thousand or less number down. Um, there will always be some that are sure. falling through the cracks and, and, and we'll have some mechanisms to, hopefully to, to be able to deal with those things. But w when I mentioned that uh, earlier in my uh, Medicaid and TennCare and, and federal budgeting comments about how our, our U.S. legislators, our federal legislators, our nine congressmen, seven of our nine have stated one of their stated objectives is to cut federal funding. Tennessee is so reliant on federal money, we need more communication on what they're going to cut and when they plan to cut it, et cetera, that uh, I'm reproposing a bilateral session of Congress to be held in January of 2016. It'll be the first one in the country that's ever been held by any state. Um, All right, explain what you absolutely. mean bilateral. Bilateral would be our 99 representatives and 33 senators in Tennessee would meet with our two U.S. senators and our nine congressmen on the House floor for an open political discussion. It would be not unlike um, every year Mayor Curley's uh, very gracious, he invites myself and Representative Alexander and Senator Bowling to City Hall to meet with the department heads and to talk about issues that are coming up that, that year. How they're going to affect the city of Tullahoma, um, what can we do, how do we need to vote to protect the interests of the city of Tullahoma, basically set the tone for the political process for that session. What I'm asking is the federal government to come down and do the same thing with us. Sit down with the state, let us explain to them what we need them to do in Washington to enable us to be the best state possible. And what can we do to help them? It's not a political witch hunt. It will be a very regal event. Um, we're not going to knock on somebody for past votes. There won't be any party political shenanigans going on. It will be a relevant, it will be a meeting on relevant pertinent political issues. 
And when our folks go back to D.C., they're going to say, all right, we just met with the General Assembly. I get where their frustration is. And then when I'm having conversations and introducing legislation, I'm going to operate in the spirit of that conversation. And we can do the same thing here. To me, it sounds like a good idea, and to everybody I talk to, it sounds like a good idea. But you'd be surprised at the number of establishment Republicans that blow back against it, simply because they don't want to be accountable uh, on the federal level. But I'll be pushing hard for that. September 17th, I have a special caucus meeting to call for that, and that also happens to be the day um, there'll be a huge rally at the state capitol for Constitution Day, September 17th. Okay, and you know, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back and finish up. The Kia Summer's On Us sales event is going on right now at Russell Barnett Kia of Tullahoma. Let me tell you about this event. Purchase a new Kia Sedona, Kia Optima, Kia Forte and receive 0% financing up to 66 months and your first three payments for free. For a limited time only, no strings attached. With America's best warranty, the 10-year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, Kia is the power to surprise. The Kia Summer's On Us sales event going on right now. Why buy anywhere else? Get your news first, fast, and free with your news leader on 6 every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. Local weather, sports, community calendar events, and a comprehensive look at the latest news stories and newsmakers as only a video news broadcast can do. Get it first, fast, and free with news leader on Channel 6, your local information network. All right, so Judd Matheny's here with us today, and we're, we're counting on a, the things that are going on in the state. And what you said just a minute ago, uh, it just really upsets me in the fact that we elect people, we the citizens elect people to go to Washington to represent us, and we elect people to go to the state capitol to represent us, and the people in Washington won't even come and meet with you? That's correct. To, listen, guys out there, y'all are elected to represent us, not yourselves. So uh, do, the, do the job of representing us, the people. There, there are, just to be clear, there were three congressmen that agreed to do it two years ago. Scott Desjardins, Congressman Phil Rowe, and Congressman Steve Cohen from Memphis. The rest of them refused to participate, and uh, the opposition was led by uh, Senator Lamar Alexander. And uh, they, they, they did offer to come and meet privately with the Republican caucus, but I turned that down because I think whatever we talk about needs to be public business. So Yes, and it doesn't need to be just Republican, and it needs to be it's Republican, not, Democrat, Independent, this country, whoever they are. This country is on its knees, and the, the solution will come from the states. It won't come from Washington. The, the solution will come from strong states, being the laboratories for good ideas, implementing those good ideas, and then working in concentric circles out with other states to make this country stronger. And as we wrap up, I know we're, we're getting ready to, to lose time, uh, there's something I want to say to everybody that's listening, and that is to be very proud of your state. Um, I'm elected to fix the problems. There's, there's so many things going on in the state that I spend the vast majority of my time triaging issues that are out here. I wish I could spend all my time on economic development and building new roads, but I'm having to constantly fight back against the federal government that is usurping their powers. But I want folks to know that for everything negative that I ever bring up on the TV show or out speaking, that your state does a thousand good things. Be proud to live in Tennessee. It's fiscally strong, um, but we have problems here with terrorism and we have problems here with letting the federal government do too much that have to be addressed, and that's what I'm addressing. Judd Matheny, thank, thank you, you very much, folks. Thank you, sir. And Judd, and thank you for letting us, as Tom would say, into your parlor. We'll see you next time. Take care, Tom.